I actually grew up on like the North Peckham Estates. You know, you walk through the corridors, there could potentially be like syringes. It was, I wouldn't say it was dangerous. Like as a kid, you don't feel like it's dangerous. There are so many people that do care and there are so many people in the world that are trying to make a difference. Hello and welcome to, to Community Heroes podcast. Yeah, I'm India and this is Sahara and today we're interviewing Cynthia. Cynthia, who is your community hero and why? Um, my community heroes are people that um, I kind of grew up with who were influential um, during my childhood. So that's people like Chris, Sydney, Valen from Leaders of Tomorrow, Trevor, and just people in the community that um, took the time out to work with me as a young person. What does community mean to you? Community to me is about the coming together of people. Um, I believe in the saying, like, it takes a village to raise a child. And that, for me, is something that I've always kind of embodied throughout my life. It's about people coming together. It's about helping your neighbour. It's about making sure everyone in the community is okay and that everyone in the community is happy. You know, I like to attend community events and help the community volunteer in the community. Um, I think community is about what you make it and what you want it to be. How was your childhood and... Had it had that impacted what you do now? Ooh, that's a very good question. Um, I had a very good childhood, fun. Um, there were a lot of things that I saw as a child that I probably shouldn't have seen. There were a lot of experiences that I had as a child that I probably shouldn't have experienced. Um, I enjoyed and spent time being a child and had a lot of fun as a child. But I think once I became a teenager, there was a lot going on in my life and around me and in the world that I think impacted how I view the world and how I see the world and was very influential in shaping me into who I am. So, you know, um, I was okay as a kid, enjoyed life until I was like 10, 11, went to secondary school and then it got a bit, you know, topsy-turvy because you're going through things, your body's changing, you know, people are, you're becoming older. So where did you grow up and how did you live back then? So I grew up in um, Peckham. I actually grew up on like the North Peckham Estates. Uh, I think y'all are too young to know about what they were like, but it's literally like, you know, you walk through the corridors, there could potentially be like syringes. It was, I wouldn't say it was dangerous. Like as a kid, you don't feel like it's dangerous. But when, when I get older and like look back, I'm like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff that was happening. It wasn't dangerous as in like, because my parents did kind of shelter me and a lot of my neighbours and kids that I used to play with, they, we were sheltered, but there was a lot of stuff that just went down. But I grew up in Peckham. Um, before my mum moved me out to like Lewisham sort of in my early teens. Even just moving people might not have any friends in a different place how did you make friends and like get in a friend group that many people don't have? I had no friends in Lewisham I didn't have friends in Lewisham until I was in my late teens and actually sort of moved out so um, I actually always went back to Peckham. I still sort of schooled in the area as well, and a lot of my friends were from there. So I'd always go back there. It took me a long time to kind of be comfortable with this new environment and accept that it was my new environment. And actually, when I was younger, I was very, very mad and very upset at my parents, like, for moving sort of us out from... I was very upset and very mad at my parents for, like, moving us out from what was considered my comfort zone, where I was familiar with, where I was used to, where all my friends were. Would you say that even though you got angry or mad, that you were glad that your parents moved you out, or would you have rather stayed in Peckham? Looking back now, as an adult, I can say yes, they made the right choice, they made the right decision, especially when you consider the way like the areas have changed, if that makes sense. Um... I remember, like, I I carried the anger a lot around for a very, very long time. I think right up until, like I said, my late teens, early 20s. And it wasn't until, like, I went through life experiences or I lived on my own that I saw the beauty of the decision that my parents had made because I, I moved out to an area that was quieter where, you know, you have respect. You can literally leave your front door open and no one would do anything, like, and... You know, I'd heard a lot of things that were happening back on, like, so say, the older state where I used to live in or the old area that I was in. And it really made me grateful that I could kind of get away from it, if that made sense. Um, 
I, I was, I was, yeah, I was mad for a long time, but now looking back, it was one of the best decisions that they actually made. It broadened my horizons even more and it allowed me to see a world outside of what I was comfortable with. You say a lot about community. Who are your community heroes? These people took the time to have a conversation with me, to see how I was feeling, to, you know, get my opinion or something. And coming from where I came from, I always felt like I was voiceless, particularly as a child. I don't know if you've heard that saying, like, children should be seen and not heard. So I always felt voiceless. But then there were these adults that were coming and, you know, asking me what I thought or giving me something to do that made me feel important. And I think that that was very influential in sort of shaping who I am as well as letting me know how important I am as an individual. Would you say to young people today to not isolate themselves and get involved more with like activities outside of school or with friends or something like that? Yeah, I would. You know what? I think it's all it's a travesty to a certain extent that some of the programs, um, like some of the youth centres and things that I was able to attend as a young person just don't exist anymore. So I know that it's so difficult for young people to go out and do that. I mean, even when I speak about the summer programs, I know there are some that still go now, but it was literally like a national thing where there were so many different things that you could do when I was younger. And now that just doesn't exist for you anymore. And it's 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 very difficult to not isolate yourself because even when I say, oh, you know, I grew up in sort of a bad area, it wasn't quite great. I know that it's even worse for you guys now. So it's very difficult for young people to stay engaged or to be engaged because there's nothing to engage them. And I don't know, my advice would be to, to try to... to, to I mean, use use the internet, use resources around you, ask people, you know, there are so many people that do care and there are so many people in the world that are trying to make a difference. In your childhood, were there any difficulties that were faced? You know, I went to an all-girls school. That was quite, um, that was an experience in itself. And, um, you know, I remember, like, growing up and in some ways struggling with, like, my sexuality and not knowing who I could turn to for that. And um, it's really funny because one of the first people that realised and sort of provided a space for me to come out and sort of express and feel comfortable with who I am is actually, like, someone that I've... I've like, it's, it's, it's Sydney. But um, come, come, going to an all-girls school, it was very difficult for me to really be who I wanted to be because there were quite a few girls that had expressed, you know, like, you know, they might be bisexual or they may feel like they were lesbian and they got bullied ruthlessly. So I didn't want to be part of that. I didn't want to be one of those girls that was bullied. So that was something that sort of held me back in a way. Also, I think that the family life and the home that I came up, that I grew up in, you know, I came from a very religious home. My parents are um, of African descent. And it's, culturally, it's seen like one of those things that we just don't talk about or there's no room or space for in the household. So it was very difficult for me to kind of navigate that as a black woman, knowing that, you know, I didn't necessarily have people on my side or people fighting my corner. So you've spoken about religion and culture, but would you change anything from your family life in your childhood? Probably not. I mean, there's one or two little things where it's like, yeah, I might change that. But as a whole, I don't think I would change anything. I think that everything that I've kind of done, everything that I've been involved in has led me up to the point that I'm at now. And there's so much more to go and to come as well. So I think every I'm, I'm one of those things, I'm one of those believers that everything happens for a reason. You know, um, a lot of people don't know that, you know, I first met, sort of Chris Sydney when I was like I said 13 and then I didn't see them for a number of years um I kind of left and moved I was actually sent out of the country to family elsewhere um as a result in some ways because of like my struggle with my sexuality and when I came back because uh, I didn't like it where I'd went um my school wouldn't take me back because they didn't want to mess up their stats or their statistics and one of the first things or one of the first projects that I got involved in was actually making a film called Postcode. And um, I remember how 
that really shaped me as a person that was really influential in terms of the type of direction that I'd taken in life after that because I'd just come back into the country I wasn't allowed to do my GCSEs I didn't really have anything going for me a lot of my friends were still in school and were still enjoying themselves so if I saw them it would sort of be like after school like you know and for a long time I felt like what am I doing with my life or like why am I here or you know like I'd messed up and having that opportunity to get involved in something really kick-started that drive in me to be better and to do better and to do more. What do you know about the Windrush generation? I'm not part of the Windrush generation. My parents are actually African, but I know that they were very influential in building this country up. And I think enough, en- I think enough isn't spoken about their contributions to this society i mean i don't want to get into politics or anything but i think it's a travesty what was done when we had the wind rush scandal of a few years ago but that in itself epitomizes how i think they haven't been given credit for the contributions that they've made to making this country what it's what what it is today this country was decimated after the war like uh, people don't know and we've invited people to come and to you know say come to this land and help us and then once they've done that it's like we've forgotten about them and i i I really think it is a travesty that you know people aren't necessarily taught about it in schools i know that i wasn't really taught about it in school it's actually through the leaders of tomorrow and like i said some of the programs that i got involved in could you tell us more about uh one of the people you've mentioned valin oh valin was an amazing guy who took it upon himself to ensure that kids from minority backgrounds weren't going um off track he made sure that we knew who we were he made sure that we knew how much potential we had he made sure that we knew how special and gifted we were so he ran the program that i've mentioned a few times which is called leaders of tomorrow and um i actually met chris through that program leaders of tomorrow so i met valin first before i'd met chris and you know i ended up going to liverpool as a result of that program there's so many other things that i'd done as a result of that program um, there's this thing called, uh, I think it's PGR or whatever, where we went and we did like zip lining and all sorts of things. And that was something that I was only able to access through that program. Like, you know, growing up as a, as a young black woman in sort of Perkham and Lewisham, my parents made sure there was food on the table, made sure I had clothes and stuff, but extracurricular things like going out and stuff that wasn't necessarily always available. And then you've got this guy who brings this opportunity to like just take you out of your comfort zone to show you different things expose you to the world i know of other people on the program who i'm still friends with till today who had the opportunity to travel to conferences internationally and you just you just don't get that anymore and i think that it's what it's kind of like being part of a lost generation in a sense because I think that that's something that if you had access to as kids, like you'd really benefit from. That was very influential in shaping my ideas as a person, helping me to articulate myself and, you know, getting me to know who I am. I used to lobby um, Parliament for Young People's Rights. Um, I've actually gone to the Council of Europe as well to lobby for children's rights and um, for the ratification of like a document that was meant to eradicate such children's sexual exploitation or child sexual exploitation um i've also done a lot of work with homelessness charities because at at a point i was homeless and i worked with an organization called center point i actually won an award with that um charity and i still have that award actually till this day um these are all things that as a young person i would have never imagined i'd be able to do i didn't know that i could grow up and do so many things you know I came from an environment where to be a doctor to be a nurse to be a lawyer was seen as the pinnacle of success but I knew that I didn't want to do any of those things and just some of the things that I've been able to do and some of the things that I've seen in my life I I definitely count myself as a blessed individual because I know that I wouldn't have been able to do those things without the community heroes that have been around me Thank you for calling Cynthia. This is a Community Heroes podcast.
Um, Please consider liking and subscribing and thank you for watching.